Astros and welcome to Hari Astro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic and that is amoebiasis, which is also commonly known as amoebic dysentery. So let's get started. So what is amoebiasis? Amoebiasis is a parasitic infection of the intestines which is caused by a parasite called interamoeba histolytica. This parasite can affect anyone although it is most common in people who live in tropical areas with poor sanitary conditions. The disease is actually commonly asymptomatic, but symptoms ranging from mild diarrhea to severe dysentery may occur. Some extraintestinal infections can include a liver abscess, and worldwide each year, an estimated 40 to 50 million people develop amoebic colitis or extraintestinal disease, and about 40 to 70,000 people die. So from this definition of amoebiasis, we get that it's a parasitic infection which is caused by this parasite called interamoeba histolytica. So when this parasite enters the body, it actually infects and affects the GI tract centrally and usually the intestines and it gives the patient abdominal pain and cramping as well as diarrhea. And it's usually common in tropical areas where we have poor sanitary conditions. So the disease can also be asymptomatic in many patients, but some patients may develop a mild diarrhea or some may even go on to develop a severe dysentery. So in the majority of cases, the interamoeba histolytica parasite actually infiltrates just the intestines in the GI tract. But sometimes we can have extraintestinal infections in more severe cases of infection. And they can also go on to cause liver abscesses by infiltrating the liver or even an amoebic colitis which causes an extreme amoebic dysentery for the patient. So now that we know what the basics of amoebiasis is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So the parasite actually lives only in humans and is passed in the feces, which is the poop of the infected person. So a person gets amoebiasis by eating fruits and veggies that has touched infected feces or by eating or drinking food or water, which is contaminated with the parasite. It can also be spread sexually by people during oral anal contact or oral anal sexual activities. And an interesting point to bring up is that some people with amoebiasis may carry this parasite on for weeks to years, often without symptoms, but continuously passing them into their feces. So if we take a closer look at this image to the right of my screen, it shows us the most common way in which the disease is actually spread. So we have these cysts and trophozoites which are passed into the soil from the human feces and this species can go on to contaminate water sources which are used to irrigate plants or veggies and fruits or the human can actually get it by also ingesting this contaminated water. So the cysts are ingested in contaminated food or water and then we have the exostation which occurs in the small intestines and this process releases single motile trophozoites of this parasite that colonize the large bowel. So we have the existation process in the small intestine and then we have these motile trophozoites which colonize the large intestine. And as we mentioned earlier, 90% or 9 out of 10 patients will actually remain asymptomatic with these trophozoites in their large intestine. But that doesn't mean that they still can pass the infection onto others by contaminating food or water sources. But in the patients who do develop symptoms, the trophozoites can invade the large bowel, causing flask-like shaped ulcers and bloody diarrhea for these patients. And from there, we can have the extraintestinal manifestations, as we said. So following the GI infection, which is usually asymptomatic, these parasitic trophozoites may invade the liver through the bloodstream, causing necrotic abscesses. And this is how the cycle continues, and this is how the disease goes on to be spread. So an interesting fact that's not actually brought up in this picture is that the disease can also be spread by oral anal contact. So any sort of oral anal sex will also cause a person to ingest the cysts from the anal contact with the infected individual. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of the disease. So on average, about 1 in 10 patients who are infected with the interamoeba histolytica parasite become sick from the infection which means that the vast majority of these patients will be asymptomatic. So the symptoms these patients suffer from include loose stools, stomach pain, flatulence, fatigue, and stomach cramping. So amoebic dysentery is a severe form of amoebiasis, 
and is associated with stomach pain, bloody stools, and a fever. And in some rare cases, the Enteromoeba histolytica parasite will invade the liver to form an abscess, and in even less common cases, it may spread to other parts of the patient's body, such as their lungs or brain, and cause abscesses even here. The diagnosis of amoebiasis. So the examination of the stools, which is the poop under the microscope, is the most common way to diagnose amoebiasis. So sometimes several stool samples must be obtained because the number of amoeba being passed in the stool varies from day to day and may be too low to detect from any single sample. So if we take a closer look at these two microscopic images at the bottom of my screen, the first one is actually a trichome stain of Enteromoeba histolytica, and we can see what these parasitic trophozoites look like. And this is actually the typical aspect of the Enteromoeba histolytica trophozoid on microscopy. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of amoebiasis. So the treatment of this disease includes metronidazole and tenadazole, and metronidazole is usually given for 10 days, either by mouth or intravenously. And to kill the amoebas and cysts confined to the intestine, three drugs called luminal drugs may be administered. They include idoquinol, paramomycin, and deloxinate furate, which can help to kill the amoebas and cysts within the intestine. And that brings us to the end of this video on amoebiasis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.